No one holds it all when it comes to thinking about accessibility. There's no one field that gets it. Uh, becoming good at accessibility is about expanding your network and collaborating, and there's no way around that. There are so many different um, accessibility needs that need um, to be addressed. Um, before university, you know, I own, if I did interact with the disability community, it was really people who had my disability and very similar needs to me. But coming here, I see that there are so many different kinds of accessibility issues, and we really need to open our eyes to all of those issues. There's a number of people that work at SILT, that have disabilities, that have the lived experience, that have the expertise, and that are speaking from all those perspectives rather than from a medical model. So we're speaking from an independent living model. We partnered with the Centre for Independent Living in Toronto last fall to host a, a political forum for the federal election on accessibility and disability issues. And the great thing about that collaboration is that there were eight or nine organizations involved. And so all of us shared uh, the responsibility not only for putting the event on, but for the accessibility involved. And so uh, we provided the space, another organization provided the ASL interpreters, another organization provided attendance. Cross-organizational collaboration is important so that we can outreach to as many people with disabilities and that are deaf in the community. It's important because we can share resources and reach as many people as we can. Demonstrating oftentimes that you can do what you say you're going to do shows other not-for-profits that it's doable and it's manageable and it doesn't have to be as expensive as we make it. If you're not intentionally inclusive, then you may be unintentionally exclusive.